Awesome. This is a, uh, so Open Grid is a real testament to Tom um, and his leadership at the city and his team and this vision that, that he described of building on existing things like Planario that, that you know, people in this room have made, people in this city have made. Um, this city has a long history of being a leader in mapping um, you know, for the public good. I want to talk a little bit about that today, but first I want to talk about, so Smart Chicago Collaborative, I know I've worked with, if we had a show of hands of the people I've worked with here in this room, it'd be a lot of hands, right? Anybody here ever uh, worked with Smart Chicago Collaborative? All right. Um, and uh, we'd also be remiss, it's awesome that, that uh, there's, there's filming here, we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up the fact that there's someone in this room who has filmed hundreds of hours of this meeting. And that name of that person is Christopher Whitaker. When we, three, four years ago, bought him a junky webcam and uh, sent him over here to, to, to do that. So we have hundreds of hours on the Smart Chicago Collaborative YouTube uh, uh, website of, of uh, incredible meetings that have happened in this really great um, uh, Shy Hack Night. So one thing that, um, at, at Smart Chicago Collaborative, we're a civic tech organization that is pretty comprehensive and kind of different than, than most of we've, that we've seen. We focus on access to the internet because we think that's at the core of everything. You can make all the maps you want, all the technology you want, shove it out into the world, and if nobody has an internet access, nobody will be able to do anything with it. We focus on digital skills quite a bit because if you have connection to the internet and you don't know how to use it, that's really of not much use to you either. Um, so it's access skills and then data, projects like this that we really care about. So we have a software philosophy, and I really encourage everybody here to develop your own software philosophy. Why do you make software, and how do you make it, and what is, what is, your, what is, what is your underlying philosophy of, for the creation of software? And our software philosophy is that we create the smallest amount of software. We believe in making the smallest amount of software to be useful to the largest amount of people and connecting residents to their government, um, uh, their institutions, and each other. And this is a great example of that. Um, at Smart Chicago, we all, when Tom was talking about the service layer, that's all we did. We helped them think about it. We um, created that service layer uh, with a vendor by the name of U-Turn Data Solutions that does great stuff. They handle all of our um, Amazon Web Services stuff. We have for years uh, offered free hosting on Amazon Web Service for lots of people. Anybody here have ever used the Amazon Web Hosting? Wow, really? Cool. <laughs> so I've never met some of you that, it, what's the site that you have? On? Oh, no, I mean on Smart Chicago. I meant on the Smart Chicago thing for free. For free, Steve. <laughs> Heroku, Mapbox, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, the point is that um, we try to be as helpful as we can with the little bit, littlest amount that we could possibly have. And that's what we did. We really didn't do all that much. It was the incredibly great work of Planario, the incredibly solid uh, con conceptual model that Tom and his, and his team came, came up with, and the great work of Windy Grid, and the city contractors that worked on Windy Grid. So we just did a little. We took that existing work, we're expanding the field with new civic tech developers, with companies that are already in the field but don't know about this particular field, improving on existing work. I mean, you know, once people start whacking up against your website, there might be some problems that you'll, that you'll learn. That was, that's a normal tech project. We certainly found that in Planario and certainly found that in, in um, a lot of the things that we we're trying to work on and just proving the value. Um, before I hand it over, back over to Tom, I just wanted to talk some, some history and perspective. Um, as I said, Chicago has a great history of creating um, map-based websites that seek to you know, sh show you for situational awareness. Um, and um, going back at least um, uh, to uh, you know, the, the Chicago Police Department uh, ClearPath website that was launched in, in 1996 on Windows 95. You could go into a police station and go to a terminal and use a Windows 95 machine and look up dots on a map. 
um, and Adrian Holovani. Adrian Holovani in May to, uh, 2005. Anybody ever seen ChicagoCrime.org? So yeah, ChicagoCrime.org right here in Chicago before there was ever a Google Maps API. My colleague um, Adrian Holovati created ChicagoCrime.org. Um, again, taking the incredible uh, work of government employees, government technologists that did all that ClearPath stuff, right? And of course, now we look at ClearPath, we like to laugh at it, and we like to think that it's you know, an ancient beast. Um, it is the basis upon which all of this is, is going on. It's really important to remember our history um, here in Chicago. That stuff is incredibly important. Um, and then uh, I started a project called Chicago Works For You. That was in 2005 for uh, the previous mayor. There used to be another mayor. Do you know that? In Chicago, there used to be a different mayor. It's crazy. It's good to remember these things. Just to say these things out loud sometimes, you know? So we had another mayor in May 2005, and I was a technologist, and I uh, created this project called Chicago Works For You. It looks pretty similar, right? Just dots on a map, took building permits, stuff like that. It was scrapped. It never got launched. Um, but that's life. So, and then I, I hooked up with my friend Adrian Holovati, and um, we started with, with some others. Uh, Every Block, um, somebody, if anybody's ever seen everyblock.com, it was a website in 2007, to, uh, 2008, that pulled together local news and public information. Again, dots on a map. Same kind of stuff. And it turns out, so the, the, the last thing I want to leave you with is at Smart Chicago, the more work I do, the more technology I make, the more people I interact with, the more crap I try to do to help make, let technology make lives better here in Chicago, for the 1.9 million of them that aren't in this room, the more I do that, the more I find it's the basic digital skills that really matters. And going out and finding those people and finding out what it is that they need. Because it turns out that all these dots on a map haven't led to communion among the police and the people. And the police are killing our youth in this city, right? There are no dots on any map that stop that from happening. There's no set of crime statistics that stop that from happening. So we have to find ways to have communion with those people who aren't here, okay? When I found out where Laquan McDonald was killed, and you probably saw the video too, it looks like a desolate spot, doesn't it? It's an odd, you know, space. So I looked it up on a map. It's a block away from uh, Kronos Euros. It's a half block away from the Greater Chicago Food Depository. It's right in front of a place called um, uh, 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 Focal Point Lighting. It employs 400 Chicagoans. It's actually a, a vigorous place in this city, Archer Heights, full of economic development. Um, there aren't any dots on a map that could tell you that. Um, uh, that can't tell you uh, what it feels like to go to work there and uh, what it uh, feels like to not be in communion with your city.